When we first learn about matrices, we are quite quickly introduced to the unit matrix, that is, the square matrix with ones all the way down its diagonal. In the case of two by two matrices, the unit matrix looks like the following. We usually give it the name I, and if there is any doubt, we also put a suffix on to say that it's two by two in this case, I2. It's just the matrix with ones on the leading diagonal and zeros elsewhere. We soon learn that the unit matrix is equivalent to the number 1 in num multiplying ordinary numbers. So we can draw some analogies. For example, with ordinary numbers, x times 1 is the same as 1 times x, and it's the same value x. In a similar way, for matrices, i2 times a 2 by 2 matrix m is the same as m times i2, and the m is left unchanged. Similarly with ordinary numbers, plus or minus 1 squared is again 1, and a quick check will show you that plus or minus i2 squared gives us back i2. So in every way, the unit matrix is the analogue for matrices of the number 1 for ordinary numbers. I'd now like you to consider the following matrix. Let's call it A, and let's take 0, 1, negative 1, 0. What's special about this matrix? Well, let's look at A squared. That's 0, 1, negative 1, 0. 0, 1, negative 1, 0. And if we do our matrix multiplication in the usual way, we get first row times first column. 0 times 0 plus 1 times negative 1. Then for the next term across, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0. Then another 0. And then finally a negative 1 again. What is that matrix on the right? Well, it's minus i2. We found a matrix A whose square is the negative of the identity matrix. For ordinary numbers, the number whose square is minus the identity is the complex unit that we call either i or j. I'll use j here. It sort of looks as though if the unit matrix is the analogue of 1 for ordinary multiplication, then our matrix A, which is 0, 1, negative 1, 0, might be the analogue of J. If that was the case, then we could find analogues for complex numbers in general. Let's look, for example, at 2 plus 3J. we might represent it as 2 times i2 plus 3 times a. That would be 2 into 1, 0, 0, 1 plus 3 into 0, 1, negative 1, 0. That will come to, if you do the matrix arithmetic, 2, 3, negative 3, 2. Let's do a little experiment. Let's consider 2 plus 3j and square it. That's 2 plus 3j times 2 plus 3j which comes to 4 plus 6j plus 6j plus 9j squared. And that's 4 plus 12j minus 9, which is negative 5 plus 12j. Now instead, let's go back and take our matrix here, this one that we thought might represent 2 plus 3j. Let's square it and see what happens. 
So 2, 3, negative 3, 2. Multiplied by itself. What do we get with matrix multiplication? 4 minus 9. 6 plus 6. Negative 6 minus 6. And minus 9 plus 4. Why did I write 3? Let's make it correct. Minus 9 plus 4. What has happened? Well, negative 5, 12, minus 12, negative 5. Sure enough, that is the same as negative 5 I2 plus 12 of our matrix A. There is the correspondence between the complex number and the matrix. Let's do another little experiment. We've got one representation for 2 plus 3j. Let's pick another complex number. Let's have maybe 6 plus j. So maybe it is represented by the matrix 6, 6, 1, negative 1. Now let's do a complex number multiplication. 2 plus 3j, that's the one I had before, multiplied by 6 plus j. That gives us 12 plus 18j plus 2j minus 3, which is 9 plus 20j. Now instead, let's multiply the matrices. The first one was 2, 3, negative 3, 2. And the second one for 6 plus j was 6, 1, negative 1, 6. Then we multiply those out. I'm not going to write the details, but you can do it yourself if you don't believe me. We do indeed get 9. 20, minus 20, and 9 again. It really does look as though complex numbers can be represented by matrices in this way. So our conjecture is that the number A plus BJ can be represented by the matrix A, B, negative B, A. In that case, X plus Y, J could be represented by, I shouldn't write equals, let's write some other symbol, let's maybe use a squiggle like that. Then we need x, y, negative y, x. Now in complex number multiplication, a plus bj times x plus jy is the same as ax minus by plus j bx plus ay. And sure enough, it turns out that in the matrix representation, a, b, minus b, a, x, y, minus y, x, sure enough, does give us a, x, minus b, y, uh, b, x, plus a, y, minus b, x, minus a, y, and a, x, minus b, y again. So, complex number arithmetic could all be done with matrices instead, if we wanted. This is a useful and interesting feature of complex numbers. Let me just write out once more the correspondence. A plus BJ corresponds to the matrix 
a b negative b a. I'm going to stop there, but we might do more with this later on.